the Ortho PAC hosted by Sam Dyer. Welcome to the Ortho PAC, where we discuss up-to-date orthopedic topics for the busy clinician. I invite you to sit back and relax as I attempt to fill in the gaps between education, current events, and real-world practice. Good morning, listeners. Today's guest is Haley Jacobs. Haley is a PA who practices pediatric orthopedics and recently was the lead author of a case study that was published in JAPA. We talked about the history and physical exam on this gymnast, and she has a wrist issue, and well, what's next? I think some x-rays are in order. You know, every orthopedic patient gets an x-ray one way or the other, right? The x-rays in the article show a clear abnormality. And then you got an MRI. So what's the diagnosis, Haley? Yeah, so our diagnosis for this patient was that she had left ulnar abutment syndrome following a distal radius physial arrest as a result of a longstanding gymnast wrist. Cool. And what is a gymnast wrist? I know there are stages and I, you know, I have to admit I had to go and read about this and read about it in your article. Can you please review that for our listeners? You know, they basically, like you said, walking on your hands is beating the crap out of your wrist over and over and over. Absolutely. So distal radius epiphysitis is the more formal name of your gymnast wrist, which is an overuse injury that's caused by axial loading on the hyperextended wrist when there are open growth plates present. So as gymnastics is a highly repetitive sport, the growth plates are at an increased risk of being damaged by this persistent weight-bearing forces on their upper extremities. And these repetitive micro traumas of the open growth plates can cause athletes to develop wrist pain, secondary to physial injury about the distal radius region in particular. As you mentioned, there are three stages to gymnast wrist. The first stage is when there are normal radiographs and they have tenderness to palpation of the distal radius. It's also, you know, you have the, the history that they either are active tumbler, gymnast, cheerleader, you know, they're doing a lot of upper extremity weight bearing activities. For this stage one gymnast wrist, the treatment is ice, your NSAIDs rest. You can consider immobilization for these patients. Sometimes we err on the side of immobilization in a cast, like a short arm cast for three to four weeks, just because we know that with that cast, they are definitely resting. They're not taking off like a brace or a splint and tempting themselves with return to sports. As if they return to sports when they are still having pain and point tenderness, they can progress to the subsequent stages. So we usually try to make them rest for at least four weeks and make sure they're pain-free and have no point tenderness before we clear them for return to sport uh, for the stage one. In your stage two gymnast wrists, they have radiographic findings such as a widened sclerotic or a calcifying distal radius physis. In this case, you definitely want to immobilize them um, to ensure that they're resting. And then once their pain improves, maybe three to four weeks or so, you can get them into some physical therapy for range of motion and strengthening of the wrist. Again, it's important to not get them to go back to any gymnastics until their radiographs actually normalize. As if they return too early, they can progress to stage three, which is where you have the presence of positive ulnar variants, usually about two millimeters. In this case, I started to have a discussion with patients of possible surgery, depending on the severity of their ulnar variants. For our patient, going back to the case, she presented with stage three gymnast wrists and she had ulnar abutment syndrome. She actually underwent surgical intervention with a left ulnar shortening osteotomy, and we did bilateral distal ulnar epiphysiodesis. Yep. And, you know, I'd mentioned to you in our contact and this that I'd, I'd seen a few distal radius physeal arrests from trauma. I, I don't remember anyone being a gymnast wrist like this, but what I do remember is each one of those, their Salter 1 fractures, there was a definite gaposis, if you will, of the physis, you know, and a lot of times on Salter 1 injuries, you can't really see it. It's just a normal x-ray and it was definitely widened. And I don't know if that has a correlation with physeal arrest or not. So epiphysiodesis and distal ulnar osteotomy. So that would be one thing if, I guess, depending on the patient's age. And I, I don't remember when the Physis closes. I know there's an acronym for the upper extremity. I can't remember it, but what's the age range that the distal radius, the physeal, and the physis will close? Uh, yeah. So the distal radius is actually responsible for about 75 to 80 percent of longitudinal growth of the arm. For females, it usually closes around two years after their first period. 
for males, usually the growth rates are starting to close around 15, 16 years old. Gotcha. So if you're younger than that or haven't met those criteria, there may be a contralateral procedure so you don't have this excessively long arm, I guess, compared to the other side. And I looked this up. I, I don't know if you knew this. I looked it up on a website that's common for orthopedic topics, and it said two centimeters, two years. I guess that means two centimeters left to grow and two years left until skeletal maturity at that point. Is that kind of right? Or Yeah, that I, I haven't read it, but that actually sounds right in our experience with our patients. Yeah. All right. So, Haley, we talked about gymnast risk today and really appreciate you coming on. Did we miss anything or anything else you'd like to cover? Yeah. So, obviously, with kids, their x-rays can be sometimes challenging for some providers with their growth plates being open, they're ossifying at different ages. But it's important just to remember that because of the biomechanically weak nature of the physis compared with the surrounding ligaments and mature bone, the physis is particularly susceptible for fracture and injury. So this is important to consider when you're evaluating your pediatric patients. You know, I don't think it's, I always try to talk to them. Like obviously putting little kids in casts isn't ideal, but if they're able to rest for a month and have, uh, you know, several years down the line of sports without issues, I think it's worth considering and having that discussion with parents. And it's also good to maybe talk to some coaches about making sure that your athletes in general are focusing on using proper technique and safety equipment, as well as conditioning and strengthening so that they are preventing themselves from having further injuries. So this is good to have a discussion with patients who may be coming in for more chronic type pain. Well said. You know, the whole, my child is going to be the next superstar, world-class athlete, et cetera, et cetera, seems to be even more so in gymnasts than my experience. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, I would absolutely agree. You know, gymnastics and your cheerleading, it's almost like a full-time, part-time job for these patients. And they're involved so much that and even in your competitive gymnasts, if, if they are out for a few months, it can definitely set them back. But if they're out for a few months because they're recovering from an injury, then that's better than them, you know, suffering through it and, and causing themselves to have pain and then their career ends. So, yeah, I definitely have had some challenges with, you know, those parents, but it's good to put them back into reality to let them know that this is beneficial in the long term. Great. Well said. Okay. Haley, thank you so much for being on today. And thank you all listeners. Haley Jacobs talking about gymnast risk. Great. Thank you guys very much. Thank you for joining the Ortho PAC podcast. Please follow the physician assistants and orthopedic surgery on social media. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Please subscribe to our podcast. If this has been helpful, please take a moment to leave a review.